beautiful people. Just had a few people asking me recently about enlightenment, about expanding consciousness. Um, and that's what this video is all about today. So to continue to expand consciousness, the first thing you've got to do is uh, you've got to break your programming. And I'll break it down for you what I mean. Um, we can't move into a future. We can't expand our consciousness hanging on to the beliefs of yesterday. Um, it's basically a state of suspending all belief and um, being able to think greater than the programs that we have. Okay, these beliefs that we hold to be true. We've got to remember that um, consciousness is infinite. So the our consciousness um, is the same as the universal consciousness. It gives life to all of this. And it's infinite. In the Bible it says, In my, in my father's house there are many rooms. If it were not so, I would have told you. And what that means is there's infinite points of consciousness or infinite rooms that we can inhabit. So there's one for rage, there's one for jealousy, there's one for anger, there's one for bigotry, there's you know the racism, sexism, violence. <laughs> but then there's also expansion, compassion, empathy, creation, gratitude, beauty. And they keep going, and they keep going. So when you've... Yeah, I guess what I'm trying to say is when you occupy the same room for a long period of time, consciousness stops expanding and consciousness is infinite. Like we can continue to expand consciousness throughout our entire existence here. Um, we, you know, is there is there a limit? Is there a, uh, like a lid on it? Um, I don't know. I would say so. I would say until we leave physical form, there's a certain amount of information we can gather and integrate. But I think, yeah, Muhammad Ali said it best. If you're still saying at 40 and you're a 40 year old person and you're walking around and you're still saying what you were saying at 20, you didn't learn a damn thing. So we've all been programmed, we've all been conditioned. Um, immediately in life, it's through our family unit our family pain, our family stereotype. Um, children obviously have no analytical brain formed at all until around age 10 to 12. So all information that comes in when we're children is stored subconsciously. And the subconscious is just a tape player. That's all it does. It just plays tapes. Um, it reacts. Okay, it's a reactionary part of our brain. Uh, then we go to school and then we get programming by the ed education system. Um, but yeah, once you open your third eye, you realize everything I know is wrong. That's the thing. You've got to stay in that state of suspended belief to be open for new information. So number one is to break your programming. To understand, first of all, you are programmed. I was programmed. Every single one of us has been programmed through conditioning at an age when the analytical brain hadn't formed at all. This is extremely well known and documented in neuroscience. Um, second step, okay, once you understand and then can break your programming, which means thinking greater than that program, thinking greater than that framework, then you've got to break your pain. You've got to overcome your survival patterns, your, your pain body, your survival self. And the reason is um, it takes energy to create chemistry. And all victim behavior, hatred, shame, blame, judgment, toxic guilt, toxic shame, there's an emotion that you feel congruent with that thought, okay? To switch on that emotion, takes energy you pull from the field and you move into that survival state and you're bound 
to that that state, bound to that emotion, which then reaffirms the perception that you have, that belief, the one we're trying to supersede, to transmute, to transcend, and it keeps people the same because they keep using their thinking, right? They they allow that the feeling in the body to be their mode of thinking. Okay, so. I've got this pain body reaction, I've got this guilt, I've got this shame. We believe it to be real, even the only truth. This is my state of being right now. And so we drive a thought equal to the emotion. That thought then drives the body again through the release of a neuropeptide, turns on those hormonal centers. And then now there's a, a redundant feedback loop here where we just keep driving those thoughts to validate who we think we are to validate this contracted feeling in the body. But as I said, to turn on that chemistry requires energy. And enlightenment is basically the movement of energy up the spinal cord, um, pushing on the thalamic gate, and then the thalamic gate opens and activates the pineal gland pineal gland and the brain releases all these very very special metabolites um, and the brain goes into a state of super consciousness and um, it's referred to as the kundalini or universal consciousness or christ consciousness or many different things so we're climbing jacob's ladder basically um, but while we're chemically addicted Okay, while we're addicted to that feeling in the body because the hormones of stress and these emotions I'm talking about, the limited emotions of guilt and shame and hatred, and blame, they're highly, highly, highly addictive. And so while we keep turning them on and turning them on and turning them on, all our energy is wrapped up there. All our energy is bound in those base three energy centers that are all to do with consumption and survival. And in that state, obviously, we believe we're materialists because everything is about that feeling and the body's heavy and it's thick and the anger's real, the rage and the redness around our neck. So in that state, there's no sentience beyond. There's no ability to access higher planes of consciousness because you believe you're a body, you're an image in the mirror, you are your job title, your possessions, bound by time, controlled by all these external forces living this thing we call life <laughs> but no we are infinite consciousness okay we are infinite eternal loving consciousness creative consciousness that's what we are um, now we place all our focus on the body we place all our focus on the particle and we become, become materialists. We, we believe that we are this shell. But let me put it this way. If you and me were driving in your car and I looked at you and I said, hey, you are your car. You'd go, you're an idiot, Damo. The car is something I just use. The car is something I sit in and drive around in so I can experience this thing called life. Okay, it's the exact same thing with our physical body. You're not your thoughts. If you can observe a thought, then you're not a thought. Metacognition. Okay? If you can have an out-of-body experience or open the Kundalini and look down at your own body and experience consciousness beyond form, you can't be form. And that's my near-death experience, my coma, that's what happened to me. You can't you can't put it back in the bottle, if you know what I mean. Once you experience consciousness that has no tether to the physical world, this Newtonian dimension of space and time, then you know that you are something greater. You are, you are consciousness itself having the experience of being Damien Horton, okay, the ego. So that's it. Uh, the first step is to understand you've been programmed. Everything you know is wrong. Sorry. It's just how it is. Because if you keep trying to claim that you're right, you stay at the same point of consciousness. There's some sweet spot where we put our hand up in the air and we go, like I did with my mentor, 
come out of near death experience. I've got 44 pieces of titanium on my skull. Should be brain dead, quadriplegic, and blind. And he was a Kundalini master, he was a spiritual master of 40 years. And he basically asked me to leave my beliefs and suspend all that belief, leave it at the door so we could get to work on the teachings. And he mentored me. Um, so to understand we've been programmed to break that programming, to think beyond the program and then to break the pain body, to, to break our addiction to our survival self, which means thinking greater than you feel. Okay, the feeling in the body, if, like I said, if that's the mode for how we think, then we stay trapped in that redundant loop unless it is, is the true emotions. And the true emotions are gratitude, compassion, love, empathy um, they're all connected to the true self they don't have anything to do with that uh, consumption apart from fear obviously um, my mentor always said to me fear is can be congruent or it is fear that's anxiety that's just a misperception it's a perception or a belief that's causing this anxiety to get triggered so then we overcome the pain body and now you go to work. Now you start doing the work. Now you are open to the experiences throughout, you know, different um, forms of music and dance and meditation and breath work and whatever it may be. And you climb Jacob's ladder. And at the very top, what you find, and we're all playing all the parts. This is why I keep saying we are one consciousness. I know because I've experienced it. We are one mind experiencing itself subjectively. What you realize at that very top point of consciousness is that I and my father are one. And you have a very different take on a lot of these things that we're told about religion and spirituality. Because when I made it back to that place, which is source, it's, it's where we come from, we're going home. We all go home to that place. You realize that I and my father are one. So that's today's video. Any questions, shoot them down below. Uh, as always, from my heart to yours, sending you light, sending you love. Please smash that subscribe button. Hit the like button as well and share this video with someone who needs to hear this message right now. All right, guys. Peace.